Jails and prisons are worried about the current coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. As COVID-19 spreads, public health officials are telling people to stay home if they feel sick. But in jails and prisons, that's not an option. Robert Greifinger is a physician who spent 25 years working on healthcare issues inside the nation's prisons and jails. And he says the social distances advice we are all hearing right now isn't so easy when you are behind bars. There are overcrowding issues, ventilation issues, security issues where people have to be checked and monitored fairly frequently, Raffinger says. So it's really hard to do. If jails and prisons are complacent about the coronavirus, he says they run the risk of becoming incubators for the disease. Since jail and prison staff and prisoners tend to be younger, one thinks initially that it's going to be a big problem. Well, not a big problem as some people may think, he says. But remember that staffs work shifts, they come in and out of the facility, and they may be bringing that infection home to people who have compromised and weaker immune systems. For weeks, Raifinger and other corrections health experts have been urging prison administrations to plan for the coronavirus. But when NPR first started asking jails and prisons about precautions, most pointed to existing plans for other infectious diseases, such as tuberculosis. Now they are feeling more pressure to act. The Federal Bureau of Prisons on Friday announced a 30-day suspension for social visits by inmates, friends and family to try to prevent the spread of the virus. Even attorney visits will be subject to approval on a case-by-case -case basis. The BOP is also suspending transfers of inmates between federal facilities. Most of America's incarcerated population are in state prisons and jails, where responses continue to be more uneven. In Arizona, a spokesperson for the Department of Corrections said employees and inmates were being encouraged to disinfect shared devices. But a correctional officer told KJZ's Jimmy Jenkins nothing new was being done and said unsanitary conditions threatened the health care of staff and inmates. NPR isn't identifying the officer because speaking to a reporter could cost him his job. The officer told Jenkins, a lot of units have issues just getting soap and paper towels stocked in the restrooms. Jenkins says he's also been unable to get details on coronavirus preparation from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, which houses nearly 7,000 people on a daily basis. But others are taking clear steps to prepare. Four times a day we are wiping down the entire jail including the cells and we are wiping down before and after each inmate comes in. She says, we are also orienting inmates on good hand hygiene and she is considering giving them supervised access to hand sanitizer. It's usually contraband in jails because of the alcohol content. For inmates who eventually do test positive, the jail has identified holding areas with which separate air intakes for their ventilation. Jose Saldana believes some of the most vulnerable prisoners should be sent home for now before they get sick. He's a former prisoner who now directs an organization called Release Aging People in Prison Campaign. It's probably going to be deadly for some of the elderly people that I left behind, Saldana says. He'd like parole and clemency boards to consider which older sick prisoners could be let out because he believes they stand a better chance of surviving the pandemic while they're home. Let's look at it realistically for what it is. To keep such men in prison to die knowing they're going to die is just pure revenge. It's not justice, Saldana says.